Wi-Fi technology has been in operation for the past 20 years or so. And during this time, the technology has evolved through the introduction of new technical standards from the IEEE, the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers, and their series of 802.11 standards. These have ranged from 802.11a in 1999 through to 802.11ax or Wi-Fi 6 in 2021. And in the near future, 802.11be or Wi-Fi 7 which is expected by 2024. All of these different incarnations of Wi-Fi have been centered around a wireless local area network where the effective range is measured in tens of meters. However, a new variant termed 802.11ah or HALO has been introduced in 2017 to support low power wide area coverage. So why do we need yet another version of Wi-Fi and what is it going to be used for? Well, Harlow is aimed at the Internet of Things, the billions of connected devices spanning nearly all verticals, smart city, retail, healthcare, agriculture, manufacturing, home, automotive and smart grid. In essence, billions of smart devices sending small volumes of information infrequently, but collectively a very significant volume of data with huge market potential. So, let us take this opportunity to review the characteristics of a Wi-Fi Harlow or 802.11ah network. To begin with, the first point we should note is that Harlow will operate in a much lower frequency band than the more common Wi-Fi technologies. We shall talk about the significance of this in just a moment. The supported channel bandwidths are also smaller than traditional Wi-Fi, but this is generally not an issue as high data rates are not required. It is worth noting that Wi-Fi 4, 5, 6 and 7 increase the size of the channel primarily to drive up the data rates that the network could support. Harlow also supports OFDM or Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiplexing in much the same way as many other radio technologies. But Harlow also supports two power efficiency techniques as these IoT type devices may need to operate over long periods of time and not have the capability to either recharge or replace the battery. Again, we shall discuss this later in this video. Other key characteristics worthy of mention is Harlow's capability to support a range of more than one kilometer, far greater than traditional Wi-Fi. Furthermore, each access point or base station can support up to 8,191 connected devices, a key capability if we truly believe forecast of billions of connected sensors and actuators that IoT will herald. Focusing initially on the frequency band, the most significant benefit of operating at radio frequencies less than one gigahertz is that the radio wave is able to propagate over greater distances than say 2.4 gigahertz 5 GHz or 6 GHz frequency bands used by Wi-Fi 4, 5, 6 and 7. It's not appropriate to go into the physics behind this radio frequency characteristic, but it does mean that wide area connectivity can now be supported. Compare this to operating at 2.4 GHz as supported by Wi-Fi 4, 6 and 7. Here, coverage is down to a few tens of meters, which, depending upon the material used to build with, may enable a single access point to provide coverage throughout the entire home. Increasing the frequency to 5 GHz ISM band and the effective range will be further reduced. However, this frequency band can support wider channels, thereby supporting higher data rates. Moving on again to the relatively new 6 GHz band supported by both Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 7, this provides even more spectrum However, operating at still higher frequencies reduces the effective range still further. Finally, we can jump all the way up to the 60 GHz frequency band used by Y-Gig. This is effectively an in-room network, as realistically a direct line of sight is required between the two endpoints of the wireless connection. So, what frequencies are actually used by Harlow? Well, this depends upon in which country the network is operating. We can see from the diagram that in the USA, 
Harlow must operate between 902 and 928 MHz, whereas in Europe it is between 863 and 868 MHz. Note other frequency bands exist in China, Korea and Japan, to name but a few. Finally, the other significant factor associated with Harlow is its power efficiency. This is particularly important when one considers the type of devices which will be fitted with a Harlow radio and the types of locations they will be expected to operate in. In many cases, it may not be either physically or commercially viable to replace or recharge the battery, so it is important that energy is not wasted through inefficient operation. To this end, Harlow supports two different techniques. The first, term TIM, or Traffic Information Map, utilises basic Wi-Fi capabilities in that the network will store data on behalf of the stations or devices until they wake up after a period of inactivity. The second, a more efficient method, is called Target Wake Time. This enables the stations and access points to negotiate a schedule during which the stations will monitor the network and thus be ready to receive data across the radio link. However, during the other periods, the stations will effectively be turned off, thereby saving power and extending their batteries.